What's good, everybody? Welcome back into the Dynasty Trade Show. So glad you can join us. We have some Mark Andrews Black Friday deals that we have to get to. But first and foremost, Adam, we're back. You're in your place. Glad to see you, but we got an intro to hit. Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Yo, is that T Dog? Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Hey. Hey. Forty chess. This a trade show. Patreon where the trades go. Tap in and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name. They know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home, make a fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off at the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 Chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted Go like and subscribe for the crew Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube You know Cooper got the wall too Let us give you a walkthrough Forty Chess This is Forty Chess Alright Looks like I'm kicking off the show, but first, man, how how was your trip? How was your uh, little Thanksgiving travels? Right, you went down to El Paso, Texas. Yeah, we were right on the we were basically on the border. I could basically, you know, if I wanted to, I could spit into Mexico. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was a blast. But I will say, I'm getting old, Mike, and I'm getting old. Everybody, I realized maybe a couple days in, maybe three for sure. Like by day three, a hundred percent, I'm like. This double bed, not not what I'm used to. You know, all these kids running around. Love my own ki- kid, but even her with everybody. It was just it was co- complete chaos to the point where it's like, man, I can't wait to be back home. As much as I enjoyed the trip, so I'm glad to be home. And you know what's even better than being home? The first day home, what are we doing? Getting right into dynasty trades. Let's see what everyone did. I always like to see what Mike did. Um, Blitzing Buzzard, you know, a member of uh, South Harmon, guy that I talk with a lot and. When I see a trade between him and you, this is going to be fun to see who pick a side. What do we got here, Mike? What kind of craziness did you cook up? So this is a 12-team super flex, full PPR, uh, best ball, start 13. And this is the league I'm in. It's uh, AAF Fuckos. Um, for those that don't know, well, you don't know, and we'll just leave it as that. <clears throat> uh, Robert Woods, Alvin Kamara, Austin Eckler, Gus Edwards. You are acquiring. For a 24 first, two 24 seconds of Sean 12 and Liebert, as well as your 25 third. Mike, talk to us. Format, players, everything. So, one of the first uh, best ball leagues that we did, right? Uh, we did, we one did of the very first, yeah. One of the very first. So, it doesn't even have median score, and that's how old this is. <laughs> no median. <laughs> we, we at least did it right with no trade deadline, you know? We did. We did. We got that part right. Trade deadlines are for wusses. <laughs> but uh, this is one of those, the the first couple of years, I uh, I had a little quarterback horde and uh, did the productive struggle or rebuild or however you want to say it. But I finished towards the bottom for the first couple of years, and here we are finding myself in a surprising spot with all that draft capital I had, all the trades, and competing right out the gate this year. And uh, had the quarterbacks already locked up, so it's been kind of nice. I, hold, I held a lot of people's 24, 24 first picks that had questionable rosters so yep. uh, a handful of times i think you and i made a trade where i sent you somebody else's oh fizzles <laughs> fizzles Fizzle Dallas, i yeah. sent you fizzles first now it's now fizzles fault that i had his first he took over an orphan so it's the previous manager so don't uh don't look down upon fizzle for the uh, dog shit he inherited but i sent you his first because he also has one of those questionable teams Blitzing Buzzard, I traded with him earlier in the year and gave him his first back, trying to tank, trying to rebuild. He also took over an orphan in this league. So, uh, yeah, there's is a real good separation between contenders and pretenders at this point. And I held uh, most of the chips, much to the dismay of uh, the uh, the top, uh, the number one seed in this league, Sean. He hates it uh, because he's leveraged all of his draft picks from, like, here till 2029. <laughs> So he's yep. kind of unable to make these deals, and when you have an up-and-comer coming for that crown, 
He hates it. <laughs> he hated the steal, but hated it. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was pretty decent. I mean, a first for Eckler, even if it's like mid to late. Uh, right now, it's on the later side because it's mine. I mean, he's old. <laughs> he's a running back, Adam. Like that's kind of what you hoped that you can get out of him at this point. Uh, Alvin Kamara for for two seconds, and then those other two pieces in a best ball might be worth a twenty five third. <laughs> I yeah. guess Edwards has kind of been bleeding carries here to Keaton Mitchell and snap share. And he's uh, pretty much relying on a touchdown. And it ain't like Robert Woods has done a whole lot. He did stuff earlier in the season, then didn't do anything. He was hurt, came back, didn't really do anything. It looked like the Noah Brown show. And then, I don't know, the last couple of weeks he's been okay-ish. So, yeah, he's, he's back what, to what getting What are your snaps. thoughts? You're in the league. Like, Did yeah. you think this was as egregious as some people made it out to be? Like, Especially if you put yourself in a, a rebuilder's shoes. I mean, <clears throat> I, I think well, what I've what I've learned is that uh, everybody's going to have opinions. Hell, uh, there's a whole show that we have that you know, we tell you our opinions on every trade that will uh, come. So, <laughs> I, I frankly, I kind of like the opinions. I I do find it interesting. I always like to find a way if it's getting out of hand, um, especially knowing that Mike's the commissioner. See if I can put a little um, gas lighter fluid on this thing. You know, see if I can light it up. I didn't touch this one, but I, I think Mike here's the, here's the reality. We are, right now it's November 28th. You're going to see this. It's basically going to be December, right? At this point in the year, like, you can basically forget about what anyone thinks about anything as far as picks go. Everybody's going to be upset because everyone wants to try to win. And the people that are going to be upset are going to see somebody getting rid of whatever liquidity is. They don't, that's no threat for scoring points, right? And they're going to be fearful of all these, po- these players going in. Reality, though, is yes, in the short-sightedness, I understand. And frankly, I think in Dynasty this year especially, you're starting to see people start to um, become a little more redraft-minded and that if there's a chance for me to win, I want to just win right now, whatever it takes to do that. And I get that. But just remember, this is Dynasty, though. So when the season is over in redraft, you don't care. Hell, if your season's over in redraft right now, you're already out of the playoffs, why do you have any reason to care? That's why. That's one of the reasons you hate redraft. As soon as it goes to the, uh, the the season being over, Mike, as soon as this season is over, you are going to every person on the receive side that you have, if you didn't win a title, is going to be impossible to move. Or very hard to move if you're not moving them for absolute dirt for the next right. seven, eight months. Right? And the opposite is true of the picks. And the fact that they're all in 24 except for one – that that's that's one piece of the equation, and the second piece is reality for me is nobody on that side is worth a first, really. Right now, you could argue Kamara and you could argue Eckler for sure, but like if you're saying it, they're ba- they're maybe on the back end, and it, it would be at the highest. That's probably the highest level. But because you, because that first is going over to Blitzing Buzzard, and he's shedding all this this older these older players, I think what people start to get upset about is. Because there's a first involved in this, the rest of it's going to have to feel light to kind of meet everybody in the middle as far as you and Blitzing Buzzard, right, when you make this right. deal. And I think that's what's causing the pandemonium is they only see one first going over. They see a couple seconds. They're, they don't even care about picks at all right now. So outside of the first, they probably are discounting all these picks. And I think for both sides, I think for Blitzing Buzzard especially, like this is what you are going to probably have to get done. And And – well, I see nothing wrong with this on his side. For you, I, I see that there's probably only a scenario of places you can shop, and for these picks, those players absolutely make you a better bona fide contender this year. To your point, Gus Edwards and Robert Woods, they may not even matter for you on a contender. They definitely won't pretty soon as far as dynasty value. But in best ball, hey, Gus Edwards, his carries are bleeding, but th- can he score two touchdowns? Absolutely. We've seen it. We've seen it time and time again. Robert Woods is still attached to CJ Stroud. I get it for both sides. I really do. Yeah. I think it's just the uh, the case. There's only one guy who was really complaining about it. And like I said, it's the dude in first. And Sean, his opinion doesn't really matter to me, but I found it hilarious. And the fact he hated it made me uh, made me love the deal even more. Right? Oh, of well, course. I mean, I'm with you. I was kind of apprehensive. And this is a deal Blitz and Buzzard sent to me originally, right? Like Good you, deal. You can even see on the counter. Like the, I accepted his counter. Right yeah, up at the top there. So, yep. 
Uh, this is one that he wanted to get done, so I think he's just petrified, which he should be. Be very scared, Sean. Be very, very scared. Be afraid. <laughs> for that uh, ass. Mike, Mike uh, lived being burnt alive by Jigsaw and is back to kill you. So Yes. Sorry. Um, I survived worse. I mean, I will say Sean, too, also, as you can tell by the lack of um, future he has on his team, does not really value draft picks. So no surprise he wants the player side there. Um, yeah. Let's get into the next trade here. Shockwave 360. We're saving up the Black Friday deal of Mark Andrews in a little bit. Don't worry. CeeDee Lamb in a fourth, Mike. Or Jalen Waddell, Michael Mayer in a 24 second. This is a 12-team Superflex, two tight end league, full PPR, .75 tight end premium, best ball start 11, shit wars. All right, Mike, shit, shit wars. Do you want the teardown in a best ball from CD? Forget the fourth. I'm not doing I'm not. I'm not involved in it cd or jalen waddle the tear down to him to grab mayor and a second in 24 what side you taking i know it's a uh, two tight end with the 0.75 premium and mayor's had some moments but like it just it's not been that great you know what i mean like it just mm-hmm. him and musgrave i think we hyped them up to be more than what they actually are and their rookie years have just been okay but we do understand with tight end sometimes it does take a while and we get impatient and we've been spoiled by Sam Laporta and Dalton Kincaid so far this year. I'll say this. I think maybe in the long run, this is the smart best ball play um, to get Waddle. Like, I think Waddle is having a down year, so you can kind of just put him in and people right. brush him off. Um, I think he's still a very good asset, especially in best ball, where I don't have to worry about starting him on spike weeks. But he can boom with the best of them. The second in this format is I don't care where it is. Uh, it could be late, it could be early doesn't really matter adam like you're gonna want 24 seconds especially in your best ball leagues right mayor could be a good piece down the road with all that being said though like i think maybe the long-term play this is probably the smart move for best ball because you're not getting into any assets that are on the older side there's no asset in here where you're like i'm worried about them cliffing in the next few years like that's not going to happen I do think I'd rather just have Shockwave's side right now. Whether I'm competing or rebuilding, I know we don't like to consolidate in best ball, but you know, just give me the safest asset and the asset who's just going absolutely fucking nuclear <clears throat> at this point, right? Who's yeah. who's been going off for the last few weeks? So, uh, seeding lamb for me. Not that this is a bad trade for either one. I think I'd just be safer if I had CD. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. I'm actually pulling up right now. Um, you know, the warp tool. Shout out uh, southharmonff.com forward slash warp because, like, I think the reality is I, you can use warp to really highlight a point that where I agree with you that I think it needs to be drawn out here. So, in the tear down sense, if I can get three legit pieces for CD Lamb, I, I, I would tell you a lot of times I would consider doing that, uh, well, especially when one is Waddle. The difference, though, in uh, CD to Waddle this year in Warp is going to be drastic, but that's actually not the ri- the like biggest highlight that I want to make here. Um, like, it's going to be for me the Warp, and I'm pulling up the table right now. Um, by the way, Christian Q Warp tool on here if you haven't already. Um, Got it. Definitely that. But Mike, when you look at the tight end position, there is not going to be a shortage of tight ends that can give you what Mayer can, right? And I think the reality is, as much as I like Mayer, and I agree with you, he can be someone down the road that I would like to have um, in Dynasty as he continues to develop. Like those those pieces, though, until they become a top eight option or so, like Goddard range up upward, they're really not even going to give you much. And because they're so replaceable, that's not one of the pieces I want to acquire back in losing an elite player like CD Lamb. Right, if that makes sense, this is the tight end twenty three in warp. So what I the reason I'm I'm trying to highlight that is, you know, instead of taking this trade, you know what I can do to get a mayor? Go grab how many X players of tight ends, Mike? How many player X insert tight ends can we name that give you about what mayor does in best ball right now? A shit ton, a shit wars amount. <laughs> shit wars. I mean, like that. That's the one piece for me that is where. If I'm going to do the teardown stuff, right, um, and I'm still I'm still for that. I, that player 
And this sec- like even the second liquidity, I could understand either, the, either you want to move it or like in this case, if you're in a rebuild, you're probably just getting the three for one thinking I should do that. So I understand the three for one, but I'm just trying to highlight that even if it's on a rebuild, Mayer is the piece that for me does not actually warrant being valued as high as he is in dynasty in a trade like this in best ball as a part of a teardown, right? If that was a second not round pick again, having a different conversation, that's a receiver that I think has long-term upside, different conversation. But for me, Mayer is kind of the piece in the deal that makes me definitely want the CD side. I'm going to look at it too. Like where keep trade cut with their, their fantastic ranks have like Michael Mayer right now. Where do the people, where do the people say, you know? So it's, it is a two tight end league and it is a 0.75 premium. So I would assume that would be tight end plus plus like that falls into their definition. So in that type of format, they have him at the 86th overall player, Adam. Right. 86. And that's about what you're paying for here as a Getty Greentone, I would say. So let me say this. Uh, then if you were to take players around that range or assets around that range and replace Michael Mayer because, listen, Warp is an eye-opener even in best ball leagues. Even in these formats, people are going, oh, two tight ends and a .75 premium. Tight ends really matter. No, they right. don't. Right. No, they really, they really don't. Um, <clears throat> if you if you hit on an elite one, awesome. But you know, Sam Laporta is amazing. But I would trade his ass away if you're going to give me these prices. But all right. So Rasheed Rice, just coming off a good game, a real good game. He's at 85. Adam, if this trade was Waddle Rasheed Rice in a second for essentially C.D. Lamb, are you interested? Then we're having. I think we're having a much different conversation. I still don't – at that point, Mike, I think I'm now saying, man, what does my roster look like and can I make this trade one way or the other? Um, I definitely would be more inclined to take the tear down if that's what my team needed there, right? Like, that's If it was a, a 25 late first. Yes. Gosh, yes. <laughs> a 26 first. If I'm rebuilding probably, if I'm contending, I would might say no just because I bet you you'll have to hold that pick for too long. Um, Josh the, the only reason. Uh, I'm a little more lukewarm on Josh Downs. Like, Rasheed Rice got me a little more excited. But, again, yeah. though, the, to the point you're making here with this conversation, it's if, you, if you're a Josh Downs guy, if you believe in that, like, you can do that. It, I, I think, though, the option of wide receivers for that is so much different than tight ends, like you're saying. Christian Kirk. Yes. Yes. I'll, you give me Kirk Waddle in a second, I'm in. Christian Watson. You just saw him had a game. Uh, he, he didn't just have a game. He had a blow-up game, right? Um, he had a blow-up game, yes. You probably could. I, I, I don't know that I'm buying it, but at the same time, just off of the principles in best ball, if he gives me a chance of one of those blow-up games, um, maybe, maybe. I, I feel like I might – the reason I would say possibly no to that one is I feel like I might be buying high on Watson, but at the same time, you're getting a three-for-one You're getting a three for one there. So I couldn't even argue if you took the Watson side there, right? <laughs> I'm not even going to throw in. <laughs> so do it. Cut, Just bro. do it. <laughs> Guess who their 101st ranked player is? The laughing makes me think it's someone actually kind of decent. Yeah. Receiver? Nope. Running back? Nope. Tight end. Oh, my gosh. No. Nope. Uh, quarterback, Adam. Quarterback. Uh, what do we got? Like a Baker Mayfield type? The fucking people hate him. Deshaun Watson. Wow. You imagine yeah. if you get Jalen Waddle, Deshaun Watson, and a second round pick for one C D lamb in a best ball league. I don't give a shit if you hate Deshaun Watson or not. <laughs> Pe- I'd smash people the people shit would hate out of people would team. hate I bet you people would hate that more than this trade right here if Watson was in it. That's how much they hate him. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. But yeah, that's just my point. Like Michael Mayer. Yeah, no, no, you're fine. you're right. I, I, I don't hate the guy, but Jesus, man. Like This is why Warp Tool is so important. Like, go get it. At least, this is the perfect time, too, right, for for you people out there who don't have it. Like, we're in the last month here of this big push. Fantasy playoffs, like, trying to win your league, understanding these dynamics with trade deadlines coming up. This is the time to go get the Warp. Just buy one month. Try it out, (laughs) right? You know, buy it, even if you want to buy it and then hit the cancel button so it doesn't auto-renew, by all means do it, but try it out. Because I'm telling you, if you start to think in these warp mindset with this, uh, does Michael Mayer actually matter in this league? You're going to make some deals or find some gems where you're going to go, man, I'm going to get one over on some people here. 
I 100% Infinite agree. Value is so much better. Yeah, I 100 I 100% agree. Now, I I think what you'll do is it kind of gives you like the ability to more clearly see kind of what I illustrated and we just Mike and I talked about there where it's like dynasty value says especially when you look at keep trade cut and where the people value Michael Mayer and it's a two tight end league and it's a 0.75 tight end premium. So holy shit, those are crazy, but Warp's going to tell you, yeah, do I really want to pay for that when I'm losing a Warp god like CD Lamb? Probably that, that's not the way I want to make my trades, Mike. So, yeah. um I will still tear off a CD Lamb in a league like this. Just not I don't want Mayer to be the bi- like the biggest highlight of no. the thing that I get back from Jalen Waddle uh, down here. All right. Black Friday. Black Friday. We have it's like a Cyber Monday too deal. Um, but Mike Terry B scary and Schumer twenty one. Do you want Mike Evans and Jake Ferguson or Mark Andrews in a fourth and a twelve team superflex full PPR one uh, tight end premium lineup start ten big dogs brotherhood. I'll say this: if I'm any type of competitor, mm-hmm. I'm smashing the shit out of Schumer's side. Give me a warp difference maker at the wide receiver in Mike Evans. I don't care about the age. And he got a free Jake Ferguson, <laughs> which is a decent enough tight end you can plug in every single week. Right? Probably going to be top 12, top 8 in warp, <clears throat> yeah. let alone points per game or points scored on the week, many given weeks. So this is easy for me. Like the Mark Andrews Black Friday sale is real for me. If I'm a contender, Adios. <laughs> like, I am doing anything in my power to get off of you. You played a position that didn't really matter. You were giving me weeks sometimes that didn't matter. You weren't much better than an Evan Ingram at times. You weren't much better than a Janu Smith or a Taysom Hill some weeks. Like, I know overall he was doing decent and he had some moments. But it's not like I thought at the beginning of the year, Adam, where I thought, like, this is a dude who could push for, like, that travel Travis Kelsey level of warp difference maker at the tight end position. It wasn't right. happening. Right. It wasn't happening. And if it's not happening and now you're injured and giving me zeros in best ball leagues, or I got to put you on injured reserve and you're not doing anything for me, but people still value you because they think of this long-term dynasty asset at the tight end position. Because listen, when a guy gets hurt, it takes multiple weeks for people to like finally settle in on where they should be appropriately valued. <clears throat> I'm capitalizing every single time on that. That's still that that high. It may be ninety percent of what he was worth worth the week before, but I'm getting out. I'm getting out before it gets down to sixty percent of what he was worth before that Black Friday sale really goes deep. So uh, Schumer Schumer nailed this one. Mike Evans for Mark Andrews. That was easy, straight up. It'd be Mike Evans all day for me, no question. If I'm competing, and then uh, you toss in a free Jake Ferguson, so I can just kind of roll with the A warp tight end life. <laughs> Ooh, baby, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, I mean, um, I-, I think Mike, when you what you kind of hit on there for me was so was so key is that, like, I- I'd put it like this with Mark Andrews. Uh, you you still want him long term, so. If I'm on the other side, right? If I'm Terry B. Scary, I definitely understand pivoting from Evans to Andrews, right? Because what you know what I don't want to do, Mike. If I'm rebuilding, <laughs> Evans, I don't know if he's won your weeks or not at this point. He is a possibility for teams any decent. I but I, I don't want those points. And I also, as much as Evans may continue to have a very uh, long and successful career, more than people wanted to give him credit for. For now, it feels like five years. Um, I don't want to have to go in with that asset in the off season, right? And if I'm rebuilding, what the hell am I doing with Mike Evans on my team? <laughs> like straight up. Now the the Ferguson for a fourth, that feels like where you're you're kind of helping bail him out a little more, right? Like, hey man, I'm already letting you pivot from. If you go take a look at the warp tool um, and you pull up just the table, one of the things I like doing in a trade like this, where it's. Uh, so when you look at the warp of a tight end, that's relative to other tight ends. It's wins over replacement at the tight end position. Like that's not a flex number, right? But even if it was, Mike Evans is giving you more warp than Mike An- Mark Andrews was. Mm-hmm. Mike Mike Evans right now in this league, twenty second overall player. Literally a spitting image in warp, one point two six six is Stefan Diggs, 1.193, A.J. Brown, Mike Evans, right there. So think about how much people value Stefan Diggs and A.J. Brown. And think about how much people hate Mike Evans. 
I get it. There's more years to be had on the other side. But my goodness, if I can just get that warp for the rest of the season for Andrews, who's going to be dead on my team all off season, all this season, right? Go. Why? 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 Why am I waiting until next? Why am I waiting until next year to get Andrews back? Like when I can have Ferguson, and I think the other thing that a warp tight end life. See, Mike, I, I, where I, where I struggle is just like putting in a complete turd. And I would still even put in a complete turd if I had to get rid of Andrews for this. A hundred percent, I would do that. But now I don't even have to do that because I can just have Ferguson be that turd, who's not that turd. Ferguson is attached to this offense in Dallas, which. Dalton Schultz, luckiest son of a bitch out there. He he, he leaves the Dallas offense where da, where Dak Prescott's been so good at highlighting and helping tight ends be good in fantasy relevant. He gets a contract. He goes to Houston, which they gave him all that money because they had it, and nobody expected C.J. Stroud to be what he is. Now he gets to play with another great quarterback. But people don't normally get the opportunity to play for a quarterback that it really highlights and, and puts the ball in uh, the tight end's hands as much and as often as Dak does. He plays a hand, a very, very good snap share there. So, for me, if he doesn't give me much a few weeks, you'll see. He has plenty of these red weeks. That's fine. But look at how many times he's a top eight or better tight end where he's scoring a touchdown sometimes too. Man, this is a great trade, I think, for Schumer. I understand I understand Terry B. Scary going to get Andrews. I, I do really kind of struggle, though, with just throwing you that, that, that Ferguson piece for a fourth here. Uh, I think this is just a... Uh... With all these damn tight ends, man, we just rank them too high. Like yeah. we're we're still we still act like they matter. <laughs> Listen, uh, we we got on the uh, the train late onto the uh, the running backs don't matter train, right? <laughs> like we we got onto that. Uh, I, I hate to be the uh, the first one on the tight ends don't matter train, but I'll champion it, man. These tight ends <laughs> don't matter. They don't. I mean. Like, I'll you say, get, you got to have some of these uh, elite seasons. Recovered, well, no, who's that recovered Ridley Truther? Uh, where's uh, like two oh, yeah. point seven five tight end premium like this now, kind now, of stuff? Now those ones, obviously, th- those ones, if you could do a flex warp, would be insane. But yes. to, to this league's to the point of this league, right? So it's a it's a two point per catch, right? So you're a full one point. Um, so at least like if you were gonna shoot your moonshot, like right now, Mike, just just to give you clarity in this. TJ Hawkinson in warp, 1.832, which is sixth overall, right behind Dak, ahead of Keenan Allen. So, like, here's the thing. If if you have one of the studs, sure. But right now, the problem with Andrews is he hasn't even been that stud. What why what, do we are we sure that he's gonna get back into that mix? And you have to yeah. hold him all offseason. If I'm contending, I'm not doing that. Why? Don't act like he's uh, you know, twenty four, twenty five years old too. I think that's the thing. We we just some of us getting older are showing our age. We think Mark Andrews is just still this, you know. He's got prime. He's got prime forever in his upside. I mean, Some he's not. He's really not old, it, right? He's like not Tom old, Brady, but he's not young anymore. Yep. Tom Brady, Brady ruins it for quarterbacks. <laughs> Travis Kelsey's ruining it for tight ends. <laughs> LeBron's ruining it for every basketball player that's ever going to play ever again. I mean, <laughs> like, into your well, point. Into your point, Travis Kelsey, in a season which I think he's still being very good, but people. Are, would admit it's not as good as last year. Right. Top 10 in this league. So, like, I understand shooting your upside if you need to get off of Evans. I just feel like that extra piece of the Ferguson was too much. And to your point, listen, if I have to get off of an elite tight end when I'm trying to win, why the hell am I not taking a top 20-ish warp option in Mike Evans, man? Right? Yep. Like, what are we doing? Stud. Stud. All right. Brian Haven. Uh, best ballers two. Okay, twelve team superflex PPR point seven five tight end premium. Best ball start eleven. All right, Koopa Troopa. Let's see what Koopa did here. Uh, he's getting two seconds and twenty four from two girlies, one cup. Brian Haven and twenty four third. He is also getting Elijah Moore and Wandell Robinson, and he is sending away the um. Mike, you know what? It, you know what the Charbon? I, I feel like the Charbonnet thing could very much go down this A.J. Dillon pathway as much as I like the prospect where it's you just keep hoping the the, the, the A.J. Dillon breakout's coming. It's yeah. coming, you know, and uh, yeah. it just doesn't. So you're getting A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet. Sorry for those on podcasts who can't see. So it's A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet being acquired for Elijah Moore, Wanda Robinson, two seconds in 24 and a 24 third. Mike, what say you? 
<laughs> this is why Koopa is so damn smart. I love this guy. I'm so glad we got him on the team over here. But this is a guy who understands warp, understands positional value, and apparently understands how to best ball. This is how to best ball. A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet are next to nothings in best ball, in the grand scheme of things. Really, they are. They're not difference makers. They're just bodies. So what's he get back? Two bodies. Elijah Moore and Wandell Robinson. They're next to nothing wide receivers. But they don't play the running back position. Same. Right? Different. They don't. Yeah, but same. But same. <laughs> but they, they don't play a position where it's like here today, gone tomorrow. Like these guys will probably hang around the league for the next three, four years. Probably have some moments at times, but also probably just be mostly disappointments, which is fine. AJ Dillon, Zach Charbonnet, like their careers could be done, you know, in two years. Like they could not have jobs. People go, they're inefficient. We don't like them. Uh, be like Daryl Henderson. A couple years ago, all of a sudden, we're like, damn, Daryl Henderson might be something in LA, right? Then you fast forward to a couple years and, like, guy gets signed off the streets, has an actual moment in some NFL games, and then they're like, ah, back to the streets you go. We- <laughs> he, he belongs to the streets. <laughs> Here's the thing. The two seconds alone in this deal is enough for A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet, right? I would pivot to two seconds in a best ball league in a heartbeat for both of these guys. You toss me in a couple youngish wide receivers – who might have opportunities to make my lineup in the future. Even if they don't, maybe somebody's got a little appeal. They think Wondell Robinson's going to have a breakout if they get Drake May next year. Insert whatever fucking narrative you want, Adam. That's the kind of asset I would rather have and pivot to. You get the two seconds, perfect. I would say however you want to look at this. A.J. Dillon and Charbonnet for the two seconds, done. A.J. Dillon and Charbonnet for Elijah Moore and Wondell Robinson, done. <laughs> Right, So at some point, the third is already free, and Elijah Moore or Rondell Robinson are free, or the two seconds are free. I don't give a shit how you want to break it down. I love this deal for Koopa. I love it because the 24 class is also extremely deep, and he might replace A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet with Travion Henderson and Braylon Allen next year. Both at times guys that we liked. Right? Yeah. Guys yep. that who could have role, at least for the next couple of years, and he didn't lose any ground, and then he picked up everything else for free. So I absolutely love this for Koopa. Great deal. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think now what's what's interesting about a deal like this, it's been at least for the part of two seasons, the last two seasons, where you may have had defenders, including myself. You know, like uh, let's let's not give up on Elijah Moore. We can we can highlight things from his rookie season, which say, you know, he, he's still going to be good and. I think at this point now, we should all be willing to completely, if you're not anyway, like remove that from the cards. That's not what he's going to be. Um, I think though, when you get a guy who's playing this much snaps, like Mike, this is one of those best ball turds now. Like it, it, the name is sexier than I think people still should have it, but he's one of those, how, how many guys would you love to have at the bottom of your bench that for their Elijah Moore types? They don't even have to have a name like his. They just yep. give me a guy that's got eighty percent snap share and might get a yep. touchdown, <laughs> might get eight catches. Like, why the hell not? That so the way I look at it in this type of a trade is he's getting that type of a player back, but it's Elijah Moore who maybe has a little name appeal, right? Wanda Robinson has a little more name appeal, right? Like that's what it, this trade looks like to me. It's okay, yeah. Let me get the seconds for these two running backs. I don't see here any type of points per carry. I don't see anywhere here where the floor on the running back raises it to where that should not be worth two seconds. So I win already there, or at least I'm even, right? I'm at least in market even. And I think for me, I want the seconds because of what I can do with them, where it's so much harder to move pieces like A.J. Dillon and Charbonnet. I think the biggest point here that we haven't discussed is Koopa capitalized with timing. And I think... The reality is timing is big for all kinds of trades. And a lot of people will ask, oh, man, I can't get a deal done. What am I? What do I do? What do I do? Mike and I, when we get people on reviews, which we haven't had in a while, we're going to start doing them again at some point, probably in the off season. It's just too much in the season to get those done. But one of the things we do is try to go through and highlight different teams, look at different situations. And we've had a fair success of helping people get deals done in, in real time. And I think sometimes when you're making deals in that realm – you have to think about what's happening right now. What, 
What happened right now for A.J. Dillon and Zach Charbonnet for this deal to happen? They both get the start. They both, both get, get start starting five. jobs. Starting jobs. Yeah. And guess what? Right now, what has been the narrative about the running back rooms? Running backs don't matter. Anybody can do it. So you had a chance on your roster for somebody that's sniffing around for that. Okay, let me go get these guys because now they're the guy. I think the timing is the biggest piece of this because you're not getting this, this fucking deal. This fucking deal shouldn't have happened anyway, Koopa. But the reason it did is because of the timing. It has no chance of happening without that timing. So, again, I think you can talk to yourself or to other people about, you know, trades and when, what, what am I doing? Sometimes it's just when are they willing to make a move? And when they're willing to make a move, are you ready to capitalize? Are you available to talk with them and make the deal happen right then on their time so that it can be done? And I think Kuba did a great job of all of those things. He understands Warp. A.J. Dillon's the 42nd running back in Warp. Oh, the 42nd wide receiver is .3 Warp <laughs> ahead of that running back. Not saying that that's Elijah Moore or Wondell Robinson, but I can tell you they both rank lower in the wide receiver ranks, yet they're still, still ahead of A.J. Dillon. AJ Dillon. <laughs> and that's the good one. Charbonnet's even worse. Yuck. Koopa. Legend. Legend. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, same... Different, hey. but same. Apparently, uh, we have what? we've changed names, we've changed a few little pieces, but we're back. We're back with the same fucking trade. Apparently, uh, here we go. Twelve team this super one. flex. <laughs> What's that? This one's this one's even easier because the uh, the Brian Robinson Ty Chandler swap is even worse than the Fergus. <laughs> That's fair. Fourth. But you, so you got a twelve team super flex full PPR half point tight end premium lineup start ten. DK's active dynasty. Mike, first and foremost, a full tight end premium to a half point tight end premium in a regular PPR league is the first and foremost different thing I'm going to see here. And then to your point, the swap in Ty Chandler, who, by the way, uh, is starting to actually get a, a, a sizable snap share, right? Uh, we saw mm -hmm. two weeks ago, then we just saw last night on Monday Night Football. Um, he's playing a lot more. But Brian Robinson... Um, Listen, all the stuff that was talked about a couple years ago with Antonio Gibson, even this year, you know, the enemy. Brian Robinson's been getting all the work and has been doing very well with it. So to add that swap in, Mike, I don't think I – I almost wish we would have had this one first because then we could have talked up some of the other <laughs> other edges of the other side. I don't think I, I don't think I have any way to try to defend the Clay Penner side, really, other than you're getting – you're getting younger. You're getting off. I don't know. I, I I can't. I've tried. I can't. I have no words. Mike Evans and B Rob for Andrews and Chandler. Like I said, this one's easy for me because it's it's the last deal we looked at, but somehow even worse. For the, right. The it's worse. Side. It is <laughs> a lot worse. Joe Fest got this one easily. I thought Schumer did a great job. <laughs> Joe Fest was like, "Hold my beer. Check yeah. this out. A tight end premium. A start one tight end premium that that's less." Right. Than the point seven five one, you know that was a start two tight end. That's what I'm saying. The point seven everything five, like. about it. It was two tight end, higher tight end premium. Uh, it's just that nah, nah. Ferguson was a decent enough player. Brian Robinson has been a warp difference maker at the running back position yeah. all year, yeah. all year. Uh, Ty Chandler, yes, kind of like the uh, the Charbonnet or AJ Dillon thing, right? Capitalize when a guy finally starts getting a role. Or somebody goes, "Hey, look at this!" I, Ty Chandler. Yeah. I've heard. I heard a little about him. this guy. I want. I want this Ty Chandler. Yeah. Yeah. This is stupid good. <laughs> stupid good. Sorry, Mark Andrews. The Black Friday sale continues. <laughs> I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd like seventy-five percent off on this one. <laughs> can I? Can I actually go get Evans for Andrews right now? I should try it. You should. You should. I I don't know. I, I feel like I have a lot of Evans, so I feel like I might not be able to trade with myself in some leagues, but I should go check it out a couple times. I, I will say you, this. You, Th this also makes me dis disappointed. Hopefully you walk away disappointed because you look and see who's got Mike Evans, and it's me. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, if it's not me, it, I was just going to say, it, and then it's not Mike. Um, well, oy vey. Uh I don't. I don't know how else I can say this, but I don't. I really don't think I would. Michael, let me ask you this: You have the you have the Evans side. You you want to move off of Evans? You're not finding anyone to give you first. You're not finding anyone to get. Like, would you do remove the running backs? Would you do it straight up in this this format? I th 
in this format, possibly. Um, Schumer's, I think it's more likely that I, I could do something like that because I know the intrinsic dynasty <coughs> value. I think in this one, there's a little bit less, but I still understand what the market is. Now, I wouldn't be doing it, so I'm going to hold Mark Andrews. It's going to be, hey, when we get to the offseason, we get the report Flip that, him. hey, Mark right. Andrews healthy. He's good to go. He's going to do OTAs or whatever the fuck it is. Boom, here you go. Now I move Mark Andrews and I capitalize on that. So that makes sense to me. I think in general, though, that's usually not the type of, like, I'm not targeting tight end assets as, like, long-term things. Like, I'm good, man. Like, if you told me I could get Mark Andrews or I could get a, let me say, like, a, maybe two seconds, right? A second and 24 and a second and 25, I'm taking the two seconds. Okay. If you told me both seconds were in 2024, 20, I'd much rather have that than Mark Andrews. What about, two, what about oh, okay? You but you said a twenty four and a twenty five second. You'll still take that. Yeah, I think I probably would. Um, I'm telling you, if it was, it's no question about it. Like I'd probably go back and forth. Like here's the two offers. You can you can get Mike Mark uh, Mike Evans. You can get off of him for Mark Andrews straight up, or two twenty four twenty four and a twenty five second. I would I would be like fifty fifty. Right, like, what do I want to do with portfolio? How much do I think I could capitalize on Mark Andrews in the off season? The uh, the increase in dynasty value. If you told me it was two twenty four seconds, I don't give a shit where they project. I'm smashing them. This class is the tits, man. I, I'm yeah. so excited for this rookie. Like, I, I we we all year I want the season to be here and I want to be doing this and I want to be competing because that's what you play fantasy football for. And then like. Half of me dies because my teams are dog shit and <laughs> disappoint. The other half is, like, holding on by a thread. And then there's a good part to be out of this, like, ooh, I can't wait till the rookie draft. We're back. <laughs> Let's get yeah, this I mean, shit all the, the way over. You, you, get the, you get the real Dynasty D-Gen side all off season when we don't. Like, see, that's what's funny. is uh, I think p- uh, people that don't really play Dynasty, if you try to talk to them, like, what it is, or, you know, it's redraft people, or people that just don't even really play much Fantasy, I think they. I think everyone in the season can really understand. There's football, basically, what seems like every day. <laughs> they can kind of understand what's happening. But then to the off season, like you're talking about here, Mike, you get to degen out when there's no reason, like for most people, to care about football, and all we do is degen out. Like that's that's what makes us degenerates, and that's where um, it's real exciting in the off season too. But I, I think, Mike, for me in this league. A 24 and a 25, I would take Andrews, I, I think. I also don't know this league specifically. I just know most of the leagues in the lineup start 10. I think I could move Andrews for more. 24, two seconds, though. Like, two seconds in this class? Shoot, man. I'd have a real hard time not taking that side, I think. Uh, just because you give me two 24 seconds, like, I know in rookie hype season what I can do with a couple seconds that project in a range where you, you know we're going to watch the combine. You know we're going to be talking – we're going to be talking to people that are maybe not even going to get drafted until the third round. So uh, if I have two of those options, two of those pick numbers, right, to trade, I think for sure I'm with you on this this year class because you just – even in lineup start 10 league, I think I can do more. But uh, I get it. Andrew still has a – he Mike, I'm telling you, whatever reason, right or wrong, Andrews is going to have a pretty gr- ridiculously good market on the bounce back. So um, – that's the reason I can understand going to that. Uh, trying to highlight the point of like, if you're stuck with Evans, like we will talk about on the rebuilding side, I would take Andrew straight up for Evans. I just feel like both of these deals, in a way, you kind of gave a little more than I think you needed to with the extra piece. The Ferguson of the fourth, like you said, this is even worse with B Rob to Chandler. Don't think you needed to do that. So I think that's why for me, both times, Evans side definitely wins. I, uh, I only had uh, one Mark Andrews here in Dynasty. Wow. Right, and uh, while while we're talking through this, I'm like, oh, I wonder, even a rebuilder, right? Because uh, like a best ball league, they know it's a zero for the rest of the year. It's not going to affect them. I wonder. I'm a rebuilder with Mark Andrews, but I wonder if I could send Mark Andrews for for two twenty four seconds. Like if you're a rebuilder, if you'd go, hmm, this feels below market. Ooh. In best ball, it might be a little harder to do. <clears throat> but I think so. but but I also, why not go tr- go try it out? Absolutely, give it a try. I did. I just uh, just shot a shot, man. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be on the next trade show, huh? A little <laughs> foreshadowing. What would be What would be great if is it, it, if it's not, then you know it got shut down. <laughs> that would be pretty cool if we had a, uh, you know, like we're talking about specifically a player, and then Mike gets a deal done, but we can't actually feature it on the show. But we, but you know, it's coming next week. Let's go. <laughs> Look at that. All right, twelve team super. 
12 team Superflex PPR nope, hat. Got, got rejected. Insta reject. All right, do? there you go. <laughs> Never I, mind. I, that's no, what I was saying. Be- best ball, I think, is a little different because it's two pieces for one, right? I thought there was a chance because it's a 14 team league. Um, 14 oh. team with a full point tight end premium. So I was like, oh, maybe, maybe. So, 14 team best ball, which I'm, I don't think I'm in this one. No, no. Uh, this is the one. Eric Eric was going to do it. Eric was like, oh, yeah, we need to do it. And then he got busy. He was moving. He was moving. Mm. So. Okay. We ended up doing a 14 team just to fit a bunch of people in, and love it. You weren't one of them. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Hey. See, 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 Mike. Mike's like, listen. Not hey. only do I, can I fill a league without you, I can, I'll do 14. I gotta get Don't two worry extra. Too. It, it was a snake draft, and I, yeah, oh, I Mike. just think about it. 14 team snake draft, just like everything we hate too, right? Mike. Where if you pick at uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, you hated your life. Like I thought. Man, I don't even know who you are anymore. Uh, 12 team Superflex, full PPR, <laughs> half tight end premium, best ball start 10. Best ball, dot, 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 almost. Almost. B. Harris, Dr. B. Harris. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, he's a uh, El, El Paso. I actually met some people. My sister in law is from El Paso. I don't know what, I was going to say El Pasian. I don't know what you call uh, um, El pa- if you're from El, Pas- yeah, El Pasian. That right. I don't actually know how you do it, but uh, he's from El Paso. How about that? We'll just make yeah. it easier. Um, 24 first in a third, or Terry, Jacoby Myers, and Miles Sanders. Mm. How about this? In a, I mean, this is a pretty decent buy if this is a late first and you're a contender, right? <clears throat> buy. Not that Miles Sanders is who gives a shit, right? He, he <laughs> might score a touchdown or something. Like, <laughs> Maybe he might have hey, one week. He, he, the rest have you of seen the people? Have you seen people getting excited again? Like, okay, no. they got rid of Staley, they got rid of the coaching staff. Here he comes. God, I hope not. <laughs> I, Mike, I, I shit you not. I've seen. You, oh, it's X. Seen it's X. I gotta find no. it for you. There's like a. There's the one where the genie like. Um, no. Is getting stripped of. I forget exactly. I have to show it to you. But there, yeah. There's hope. <laughs> there's hope. There's hope. <laughs> But I just mean buying McLaurin and Myers for uh, for a first and a third. I think that's a decent pur- purchase if it's a late first as a contender push. Could you get more if you're Dr. B. Harris, do you think? Or uh, Actually, I don't even know where this first is, but I'm just assuming this looks like a contender I, rebuild deal. I, I, I would say it this way. The third from – okay. I, if I can get a first for McLaurin and a best ball and I'm rebuilding, I'm going to take that. The third – the third for Myers feels kind of light. If you told me I had to do it to get the first, like I can understand it because I think I'm like, I think I'm able to find like, this is where I know I'm selling Myers light and I won't like that per se. Right. But I also know like I could find not Jacoby Myers necessarily, but I can find other replacements. So like I'm still getting two for two. The third is light for Myers. I would, I could probably take that. I'm fine moving off of Sanders at this point. This is if there's any name value left, go ahead and have it. I, I would definitely have liked to try to push for a fourth or a third or something back, but I think the big piece here, if you're getting a first, the other thing I'll say about this, and and Mike, you you know this to be true in leagues that um, are not either not been around for a while, or you don't have um, someone that's you don't have a, t- a couple teams that have really built juggernauts in best ball. Because we'll we'll talk all the time about how in best ball, if you build right, you're gonna have a much better chance of making the t- making the title game or like not flaming out. But Mike, I also know that in best ball, there's a ton of leagues, even even some leagues that we're in, right? Some leagues that I play without you, I've seen plenty of leagues that I'm not in where it's like, man, this team is definitely the one the the current best team or the you know second best team. But this team is now walk in the park to. In a best ball league, there it's almost the opposite in a way. When you when right. you don't have a bunch of teams that build right, now it's almost more variance because any fucking random team can pop off. So I almost, if there's a chance for this to be like a middle of the road pick, like if they just get in the playoffs and this could be a 108 type pick, I think I'd definitely would rather have that side. I will say I understand buying these players um, with the first on a best ball if it's late um, and you're built correctly. But it's... Uh, I, I just think that um, would I like to have gotten more for, to your question on Dr. B. Harris? Sure. But if you told me in a rebuild I'm, I'm getting off of these guys, like I really would prefer to get off of McLaurin in a rebuild. I don't think you have to, but I would like to. And I just, I'm happy to get off of Miles Sanders in general. Yeah. 
I think uh, if I'm a contender, I don't mind this side at all. Uh, for Dr. B. Harris, there's a conversation that maybe you could have got more or whatever, but two reasons that uh, I always push back on this. Depends on your market, who the fuck's buying, right? If this is the best price you're getting, pfft, smash it. The second reason, too, is, uh, like, I want the points off my team if I'm rebuilding. Like, get the, I don't want to fuck up a draft pick in the last couple of weeks because I was stubborn and trying to hold out for maximum value right? Positioning in the 24 class is going to be everything, right? You're going to want a top three pick, period. I don't want to screw that up at all. Ideally, you want the 101. You want to be the one who holds the leverage and can make the pick. Now, I'm not saying picking at two or three is ever going to be bad. They're going to be really good players, but there's some intrinsic value to be in that first pick, right? People might possibly come up. The guy from three might come up because he's worried that you're going to take, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., and he wants to be the guy to select him at 101, even if that wasn't your plan all along. So this is kind of where I'm at with it, where I think it's a good deal just to get him off now. If this is the best you can get, don't don't be too stringent. And uh, looking at Dr. B. Harris's league, it's a real close race for who's getting that first pick, right? <laughs> the worth in a game in his median scoring, right? He's got seven wins. The guy above him's got eight. Like <laughs> I'd be shitting myself, too. Like, fuck, here we go. Uh, Charlie, I know you're the top team in the league. Just let me get this first just for that second reason. Like, yeah. I'm going to pivot into, a, you know, a wide receiver four or five of this class upcoming. That's going to replace McLaurin. The third is just whatever. Uh, you can also have Jacoby Myers and Miles Sanders, too. Just because yeah. they don't mean anything. It means more to me to get the 101 pick than it is to have those dudes on my well, team. Well, that's that. That's one of the things in general, and in, in when you're rebuilding, is uh, the intrinsic value that comes in of understanding your taking your team closer to the earliest pick, if not the earliest pick possible, right? Yeah. So, like, that's one of the additional benefits I think that people kind of miss out on. And I'll say this then: if if, if it's that if it's that clear and defined, uh, based on what you were talking about with Charlie, if it, if it looks to be the clear defined top team, the other thing is. You're not, if you're Charlie, I, in most markets, going to be able to, if people are like going to pencil you in as 112, which isn't still even correct. Mike, we have seen, for example, uh, in the, the second year of the Bomb Squad, like that, that team you had was ridiculous. You lost in the second round. You had right. a buy and then lost. Like, it's not without possibility that a team loses. So, yeah. I'll, you're probably not able to move that first for better than these players. And I'll still take the upside swing on all right. Like he's probably I'm probably getting the 112 here, but my, I still have an upside of like what if it is the 108? What if it is the 109? Right? Like yeah. I, I I think it's a I think it's this trade makes sense. I'd say it that way. I think it makes sense. I don't think you can get probably much more of Dr. B. Harris. And I think sometimes you can sense when a guy's trying to get one oh one and this feels like that's the case too, right? Yeah, yeah, it definitely <laughs> feels like that. Definitely does. Uh, just to, like, when I pulled up Sleepier and I'm looking at Dr. B. Harris's uh, leagues, do better, man. Like, do better. Come on. <laughs> Represent the brand, Dr. B. <laughs> what do we got? He needs more leagues or he has what? Well, uh, he needs, one, he needs more leagues. But, two, he's got a lot of, like, middling records and a lot of tankers. And I don't see a lot of super contenders. We got we got one, two. <laughs> two. Two goddamn leagues, Dr. B. Harris. Come on. <laughs> Dr. B, too busy um, being a doctor. I'll say this: it's it's like the Browns. There's always next year, buddy. You know, there's always <laughs> next year. Twelve, twelve. Speaking team, of team reviews, apparently this guy needs some. Yeah, twelve team, twelve team superflex PPR half point tight end premium lineup start ten thirty burger. Let me get a thirty burger, man. Devon A chain, Joshua Dobbs, and Sammy Laporta, or the Bay Shaboba getting also from El Paso. What the hell? We got two. This is getting weird. Um, all these El Paso stuff going on. I right. can't think. It's odd. Chris Godwin, 24 first, 24 second, 24 third, and two 2024 fourths. Okay, Mike. Godwin first, second, third, two fourths, or Laporta, HN, Dobbs. Lineup start 10. This one feels really light. <laughs> really, really light for Shaboba. And I still don't know what the hell a base Shaboba is. <laughs> We're on like episode eight million. I still haven't figured this. I feel like this is the, this is the lightest I've ever seen Shabo. But it's always like he would come in on uh, Savage semester, like a little darker, like working heavy machine equipment. I feel like it's really bright in there. It's kind of light right now. I here's the problem. Like I, I don't know how to explain this, but I also don't really know. I don't understand what Cal One's team looks like. 
so I don't I don't know. I also don't feel like I'm in lineup start ten necessarily getting anything that's like all right now I'm ready to like when I send a package away of of Godwin a first and a second. I also want to feel like yeah well, all right I did that because now I'm really in a good position to win. Like I don't really know that Dobbs or Laporta makes me a better team to win right now, frankly, in a lineup right. start ten. And then A Chan obviously does if he's playing, but when is that going to be? Does that make sense? Like I kind of I kind of don't like it for either side. I don't know how to say that other than just to say it. Yeah, it feels just gross all around. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> it feels, feels really gross all around. Um, I don't know what to I do with my hands. Am I? Am I? Don't. Do you? Do you get what I'm saying? Am I crazy yeah, to say that? Exactly. Well, I'm looking at two in a lineup start ten, and I'm looking at uh, Cal Cal One's team. However you want to say that. He's got a good team, but he's also like kind of middle of the road. So maybe that's what Shabo was banging on with, uh, you know. Like here, I guess he did. He only got the third and fourth off of Cal. The other ones came from Deverbs, who's also, I guess, in the same spot that Cal is. They got the same record, same points, etc. Um, this, I don't know. This feels gross on both sides. <laughs> I don't. If I'm looking at Cal's team, like I'm trying to justify it, right? Like maybe Achan can be that hammer. But then I look at what he has right. on his team, like on his roster, and I go. Shit, man, it's almost tough to, like, slot this dude in, right? ETN, Bijan at running back. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, I guess, maybe, now, because he's going to be out for a couple weeks. You got an opening there. He could slot him in in a lineup, start 10 in a flex. Yeah. <clears throat> Laporta, he was already rocking, like, Evan Ingram. David and Joku. Like, I don't oh, think I'm adding, no. like, another. Let's another add, let's add another there. non-warp difference maker in here. Come on. Let's muck it up, you know? And then Dobbs is going to be his QB3. He's, like, starting Jordan Love and Tua, you know, almost every single week. So, okay. But then if I'm on Shavola's side, it's like Chris Godwin's taking a massive hit this year. Like, Achan is worth a first and a second probably to most people in just about any league, anywhere, at least, I would assume. Same for Sam Laporta. So, I don't know. Neither one of those guys are in the ballpark of, like, Chris Godwin. Or I, I should say that the reverse. Chris Godwin is not in the fucking ballpark of either of those two guys for most people's dynasty ranks. So I can't even one for one. i got to add, like, the second, which means you could just got a first for the other one, and then it's a super flex quarterback for depth. I don't give a shit. The third and the two fourths get them off my team if I'm rebuilding. Like, that's fine. I fucking hate it for both sides, damn it. I told you. <laughs> I told you. I told junk. you. Well, because the reality is <laughs> there's no – if you're rebuilding, which it, you would assume if you're trading away those players you're rebuilding, I think. Um, I would rather just have Laporta and A-Chain develop. Like I, I understand wanting to get off of Laporta at a peak value. I've talked about that quite a bit. But, Mike, it just here, – here's the problem. If I'm – uh, Cal won. Like, I don't think I'm paying up for Laporta, frankly, right now. If I'm contending, right? Like, that's that's the biggest thing. If you wanted to add in for depth to get Dobbs, and you wanted to send a first to go get a Chan or whatever, fine. Like, I I can get behind that. I just don't want to pay for Laporta right now. I don't think you get a difference maker, and you also probably weekly. Can you weekly right now say for sure that Laporta is the play over those two guys? And if and if you if you really can. Why do you ha- why do you have those two tight ends? Like I don't want to have a decision to make a tight end. I really hate that. Um, okay. So Shaboba also like I don't I want to bet a, I do want to bet on Godwin at a pretty cheap price right now. I feel like he's hitting pretty low. Like I'm okay buying him as a as an add in on a trade, right? But this isn't an add on on a trade, man. <laughs> You're sending away some pretty good young players in Laporta and Achan, right? And so that's where I kind of like ah. Eh. What is the D Verbs team? Uh, he's, uh, ju- he's just it, above Cal. Like, they're basically the same team. Right? So the, the, these are very late picks? Yeah. Like, they're uh, currently third and fourth in the league in standings. I'm sorry, Shabubba. You know, I, you know I love you. Cal, I don't know you. I don't know if I love you. But I hate this trade for both of you. Sorry. <laughs> this is very rare, right? We think it, it's nice when, when a trade goes down and you can see how it helps both sides, right? And that's ultimately, like... I mean, people say, that's what you want in Dynasty. You want to help out. But no, I just really want to help out my own fucking team. Let's keep it 100. Um, but, but it's very rare where you see a trade and I go, 
This doesn't fucking help anybody. This is a, this is junk for both parties. I think this might be a first. I've never seen a trade where I go. It's usually somebody gets got, or it's like real fair and even. You really look at it and go, "Damn, you both suck." <laughs> Mar- the, Mar- the Marshawn Lynch thing. I know I'm a good guy, but I'm gonna get mine more than I get got though. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I just I think the biggest thing is like the dynasty values on Cal side. But if I'm making a trade in December, essentially, I want to be getting assets that are going to help me win a title. I think Achan could do that, but I really don't think Laporta and Dobbs are project to be that or what I want to pay to do that right now. So, yeah. Anyway, Carson W one six five is acquiring last trade of the deal or last trade of the day, Mike Justin Herbert in a twenty four first. From red card with three A's. It's like red card. Uh, is, that, is that triple A? Like, all right. Um, Joe Burrow, Kenneth Walker, and a 24 second. So, Mike, Justin Herbert and a 24 first. Or Joe Burrow, Kenneth Walker, and a 24 second. This is a 12-team Superflex tight end premium. Uh, t- I'm sorry, not tight end premium. Two tight end league, full PPR. Lineup start 10. Another one. So, all right. <laughs> We we touched on this the the last trade episode right while you were in El Paso we did yeah. that one yep um, I'm taking Justin Herbert all day of the week over Joe Burrow at this point right now um, yeah especially if you're any type of contention at all like you're still in it just makes sense right give me Herbert I I said that if you were gonna do that you're gonna send away Herbert you got to tax the the shit out of him though like you got to tax people for being able to move within a tier for a guy who's injured and giving him no points. Right. The Kenneth Walker part I understand and I go okay I get it. Yep Kenneth Walker that's the tax. Fair. Fuck how the fuck did a first get in here <laughs> like how'd the first become like a thing how'd you get that back like I need all right see so you tax me now I gotta tax you I need the first <laughs> I tell you I, first you can have the second though I tell you what happened um I don't ask Carson W one six five I don't know you but I think what happened is this he listened to both AMA and the trade show and he's like listen. I, I'm gonna have to be a patron. I'm gonna have to. I need to come on there and show them how you really tax somebody, really talk some shit about this whole Burrow thing. Not only am I gonna get Herbert, but I'm gonna get the first too. Like, cause here's the thing: uh, with Walker being hurt, like I really like that first pivot from now you get Walker in a second because now I'm like with that first, I can instead of having to hurt Walker, which also has a brutal playoff stretch, like. Uh, schedule wise I can go get a first and just re-roll this into whatever the fuck I want it to be like that top trade is just so ridiculous that top side is just outrageous you can't you can't stay in the top six quarterbacks and then get to re-roll the injured running back into whatever the hell you want it to be that's just that's like my, it's, it's kind of like in franchise mode if you just kept sending offers and you basically just kept figuring out what you needed to do to screw over the computer like this feels like it's a, a very gamified trade. Like, how did you do this? Like, what kind of cheat code did you use? You know? It's amazing to me. Like, it started out so good. I'm going, okay, Herbert, Burrow, Kenneth Walker, and then the first just kind of got snuck in there where I went, huh, what the fuck? Oh, he did a first, second swap? How? How? <laughs> like, shouldn't it be? Doesn't it feel like it should be the other way? If it yeah. was going to be anything. Yeah. Like, like I'm giving you Burrow Walker and my like, 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 first. Like, like, and I know, well... Let me get he, your can, second. Can I tell you where actually... If, it, it, here's where it feels like it should be the other way. Walker is an injured currently, but also a running back. So, like, I'm not... What I'm not doing if I'm not get If I'm getting Burrow, I'm not winning right now. That's first and foremost. So, I'm also not acquiring a running back. No. Right? Like, no. that's why... It, Walker should be on the other side, in my opinion. Like, I know he's hurt, but you're thinking, all right, well, he'll be back. I need to get Herbert, so swap me that first and the Kenneth Walker in the second. Like, if you told me the tax, Mike, this is the way I would word it. If you told me the tax was you have your injured Joe Burrow, you have to get off of that. To get to Herbert, you're going to have to now take on Walker in the second and send the first. Would you do that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That that I'm, like, saying, okay, that makes sense. But the co- it's the combination, too. It's just a weird one. Yeah. Like, why are you buying what's going to be going into year three running back in a second with the Burrow side? That's what I don't get. get. I don't get it at all. 
I, well, I'll tell you what I do get. I get the Carson W side. I love that side. I get that a ton. So I get that. Um, I don't. I personally don't get it, but I get what he's doing. Carson W. Sh- shout out to Carson too. He's got the holy Eagles shit, logo. man. Holy shit, man. His logo. His you know what Carson I was gonna say? W. You know what that's going to? Let's go, birds. That feels very much like a. Uh, I won't say his name. We just don't speak that name. But sounds that's very much like an Eagles trade, right? You're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Howie Roseman. Howie Let's Roseman. Go. God, get Howie love you, Howie, here. and love the Tennessee Titans being the farm team. It's pretty awesome. Apparently, Aiden is uh, well, Carson W. I, I, for, forget the Titans, which, by the way, nice. But the Saints. How, it's just like, yeah, we, we kind of own the Saints first every year now at this point. We just, it's ours, you know? It's, we claim it. Whatever claim whatever it happens to them, we, we get the benefits. So, yeah, we like that. Oh, man. This was a good one. Some good deals in here. Uh, the Mark, Mark Andrews Black Friday sale is real. It was. And, uh, I, 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 like the, I like the I like the Mark Andrews it. trades. I think they showed. Uh, I think they give you an idea of where you can go if you had Andrews. Um, it doesn't have to be Evan specifically, although somehow it has been Evan specifically. Um, yeah. But the idea of you know, go get yourself someone that's older, devalued. Maybe Keenan Allen fits that same mold, that same mold, right? Something like that. You can go get one for one a swap like that. That's really good in hell. Because Andrew's uh, market's so good, Mike, you might get a little throw in there. You know, can I can I grease in a Jake Fergie? You know, can I get a Fergie in this right. deal? Can I get hell B Rob? Can I just get here? Here, here's your Ty Chandler. Can I get Brian Robinson? So, give you some ideas to play around with, toy around with, with your Black Friday or Cyber Monday purchases here. You know, that's true. Hey, we just make a Prime Week. <laughs> Mark Andrews Amazon Prime. It's four D week, man. You know, go get your ass. Some, get, go go get off that Mark Andrews you've been sitting on, buddy. Love it. Appreciate everybody tuning in. If you could do us a giant favor, if you like the video, go down, hit the like button, please. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just hit the sub. Sub. I know you're watching. I know. I, I'm wearing glasses, you. but I can see you. I can see you watching. Hit the damn subscribe button. <laughs> hit the damn subscribe button. Hit that, and, and then and then yell at Mike in the comments. Tell him he bullied you. <laughs> we love y'all. We will see you back here. Same time, same place next week for the Dynasty Trade Show. We're out of this thing. Peace.